Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Kleppe, and today I'm here to talk about constipation. Constipation is one of the top complaints we get in our clinic and can be very frustrating for parents. Today we are going to discuss the symptoms, the causes, the treatments, and when you need to seek a doctor's attention. The symptoms of constipation are essentially similar at any age. Most of the time your child will have hard pellet stools, strain to use the restroom, or have snake-like long bowel movements that are difficult to get out. Older kids will often complain of stomach pain, especially after mealtimes, and they can even do stool holding behaviors where they will rock back and forth while stiffening their bottom and legs. They may even cross their legs, stand on tiptoes, fidget, squat, or even do a dance. One very important thing to know is that children do not have to be having hard bowel movements to be constipated, and some may even have diarrhea. George, you did so good today. Is there any other, thing, any other questions you have for me? Yeah, I did just want to ask about one thing. When he tries to go to the bathroom and poop, it seems like he's uncomfortable and he grunts and he gets really red in the face and pulls his legs up. And I just didn't know if that means he's constipated or something's wrong or I don't okay. know. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. One of the most common complaints we have of parents that come in with their newborn child is that they're straining or having difficulty having a bowel movement and believe that their child is constipated. Having a bowel movement is one of the hardest things that your infant will do during the first few months of life. They have to learn how to tighten some muscles while relaxing others, which is very hard to figure out. Also, they are laying on their backs the whole time. Babies will grunt, strain, get red in the face, and flex their legs while trying to poop. I will always tell parents to not focus on how frequently their child is having a bowel movement, but what does it look like? If it looks like a normal bowel movement and it is not hard, pellets, or have blood in the stool, then they are likely not constipated. Also of note, adding things like rice cereal to the formula or using soy formula can increase constipation in babies. Low iron formulas are on the market. However, iron is very important for neurodevelopment and prevention of anemia. So the benefits of the iron are very important in your baby's formula and the iron in regular formulas is not high enough to cause constipation. So please discuss with your pediatrician before making any formula changes. The infant time period can be interesting because at this point you may be introducing baby foods into their diet. It is important to note that during this time frame you should continue to give your infant at least 24 to 32 ounces of formula during the day as well because at this point in their lives food is for fun and it's very important for them to stay well hydrated with their formula. It also provides a good amount of fiber. Also of note, in the infant time period you can use juice or pureed fruits to help with your child's constipation. Please refer to the handout in the link to see the specific volumes for your child. Do not attempt to utilize laxatives for your infant. Do not use low iron formula for your infant. Iron is crucial for processes like red blood cell production in your infant and to help their brain develop appropriately. Do not use k syrup to treat constipation. This used to be a home remedy, but is no longer advisable. Good morning, Christopher. How are you doing? <laughs> Mrs. Manbeck, how are you? I'm doing great, how are Good. you? He's getting so big. He is. How are things going at home with him? Well, we've been working on potty training, okay. and it's not going that well. Oh. Christopher has even started refusing going to the bathroom on the toilet, and we just don't know what to do. Now we will discuss toddler constipation. In this section, we have to discuss potty training. The average age of potty training occurs about 30 months of age. This is potty training during the daytime. Nighttime bladder control may occur several years later. It's important to note that during potty training, several things can occur that may cause constipation. There can be many reasons for your child to develop constipation during potty training. These things include starting too young or before your child is behaviorally ready, if your child is constipated before starting potty training, or even position. If your child's feet are not firmly planted on a surface, you may utilize a footstool to make your child more comfortable. Also, if the seat is too large, children often get scared that they will fall through. In order to prevent this, you can use a toilet specific for your child or use a smaller toilet seat. 
if you utilize the previous techniques, this can take the pain and fear out of the process and lead to much more successful potty training. If your child begins to experience painful bowel movements or constipation during the toilet training process, it's important to take a break. You should take a one to three month pause in order to help your child recover from the painful bowel movements and the constipation. You should discuss with your pediatrician the medications that may help with this process. This is important because stool softeners can be used to soften the stool and allow your child to have an easier bowel movement with less pain. Laxatives, on the other hand, can be habit-forming and do more harm than good if used inappropriately. If you have to take a pause during toilet training, it doesn't mean you failed. This is actually quite common. Some helpful hints for when you start toilet training include making sure you schedule 10 to 20 minute bathroom breaks. The best time to do this is 20 minutes after meals. Allow your child to read a book or play a game while sitting on the toilet so they don't get bored. When they do go to the bathroom in the toilet, make sure you provide positive reinforcement. This can be a sticker chart, doing a bathroom dance, or giving a small reward. Even with following these tips with potty training, accidents are bound to happen. Don't punish your child if they have an accident. This will only delay the toilet training process. We have now discussed newborn, infant, and toddler constipation. Now we need to talk about the warning signs. If your child has constipation and any of the following list pertains to them as well, please seek the advice of your pediatrician. Delayed passage of meconium at birth longer than 24 hours after birth in an otherwise healthy term newborn. Fever, vomiting, or diarrhea. Rectal bleeding. Weight loss or poor weight gain. Family history of Hirschsprung's disease. If your child has known brain or spinal cord abnormalities. In general, if you have any doubts, questions, or concerns, it is best to see your pediatrician.